All right, in this video, let's go ahead and take a look at number two, referring to naming. Double click, and that's going to open up Xcode. We definitely want to open that. All right. So programming is all about solving problems. So let's take a look at what our first problem is. Pet problem. Oh, I knew it. So what happens, you have too many dogs, cats, and turtles, problems happen. So let's imagine here that uh, we're going to keep track of all these animals. So you could do this, you could write a comment, and then the number, and then a comment to tell you what the number is. And then you just add up the numbers as you go. So let's see what the experiment is. So it says, as the week goes on, you get more information about what pets will be in the show. Change the code above to update the totals. For example, someone's bringing a dog. So let's change the number of dogs from five to six. And we have to change that everywhere else we reference that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this to a six. And then because this is represents the dogs, I'm going to change that to a six. And then I'll go down here and change this to a six as well. Perfect. OK, if someone's bringing a new animal, we can just add other animals by creating a comment and the number. All right, another person is bringing a dog. Okay, so seven and seven and seven. Uh, one of the turtles is sick and won't be coming. Uh oh, poor thing. Hope it's all right. Let's change this to a 2 and then this represents the turtles so we'll change that to a 2. Uh, another person is bringing a cat. Okay, more cats. Can't have enough. Can't have too many. Here we update the cats here and then we update the total number of mammals. Alright, someone is bringing a hamster which is a mammal. Awesome. So let's come up here. We're going to add another line so I want to click in. I'm going to press return and then I'm going to do the comments, I'm doing the forward slash, and we're going to say number of hamsters. So far we got one. All right, now we need to update this. So let's add this here, plus one. And since a hamster is a mammal, we want to add it here. OK, so now to notice that updates. OK, now could there be a better way to solve this problem? You know what? I think there is. I think there's a better way. Let's see what it is. So we've made all these changes. It'll look something like this. Of course, I thought they said another dog, so I added a seventh dog, but that's okay. Now, the problem is, of course, it's easy to make a mistake because you look at these numbers where you're adding numbers, you really don't know what they are. Plus, you had to keep track of them, and so it could get a little confusing. All right. The one thing we want to do, it says, one of the most useful things in writing code is being able to give something a name. So instead of referencing numbers, we want to give this a name. All right, let's do that. So as you name things, it's going to help you so that you avoid errors in your code. And it's going to help you keep track of things. Now in Swift, you can choose a name and associate it with a value by defining a constant. So when we talk about this here, we're referring to a constant. It says use the word let followed by a name to define a constant and the equal sign to give a value to the constant. So here we say let number of dogs equals six, number of cats, and so on. So these are called constants. Uses the let keyword and then it has a name, and then it has equals, and then a value. Then, now notice here, once we have the constants, then we can use the constant wherever we would have used a value. So here, when we want to know the total number of animals, we just say number of dogs plus number of cats, number of turtles, number of hamsters. So notice how this saves us a lot of trouble because you know exactly what the number represents. All right, now it says you can even use the playground here to do math. You can add it to subtract or 
add. So if uh, two, two more people bring a dog, you can just say six plus two. All right, so let's try it out. As the week goes on, you get even more information about people's pets. Update the code above for the following updates. All right, two more people are bringing a dog. Okay, let's check it out. Let's just go ahead and do the plus two. And then notice how this updates here. And then it updated down here below. See, we didn't even have to change anything in our formula. We just had to update the value. Uh, the sick turtle's feeling better. Oh, good. And will be coming. So number of turtles, we're going to add one. Awesome. And one of the cats can't make it. Uh-oh. Let's go ahead and just subtract minus one. Notice how that updates here on the side. Perfect. Another person is bringing hamster. Oh, good. They won't get lonely. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a two. Check it out. That's pretty cool. Okay, now they talk about auto-completion. Auto-completion is when Xcode knows what you've typed and the things that you've entered and it gives you suggestions as to what it knows. It's called auto-completion. So it helps you write code quickly and without uh, making as many mistakes. The reason for that is when you use auto-completion, you won't misspell a name. You'll know exactly what the value is. There's going to be some other stuff on this list, and we can ignore that. All right, let's take a look at that here on the next screen. Identifiers. So a name is called an identifier, and you're going to see it used in an error message. So we really need to know. We could call it a name, but they refer to it as identifier. Also notice the constants start with a lowercase letter. And then when we have multiple words, we call it camel case. So here, notice you have the, f the first word is lowercase, but the second word is uppercase, and the next word is uppercase. This allows you to run a bunch of words together because you don't want any spaces in your constants. All right, let's see what the experiment is. OK, we got more changes. Hey, someone is bringing a pot-bellied pig, and a fish, and a snake. Okay, let's add these up. I want to go over here and I'm going to insert a line. I want to insert another line so I have kind of the equal space. We're going to say let and let's go with number of pigs. And we're going to say equals one. All right, now total number of animals. Let's add it to here. So we say plus number. Now here's where autocomplete comes in. Notice here we have all these words that we've already typed. And then there's other things below. We won't worry about that. We just want to pay attention to this first list. And we want number of pigs. So if I use my arrow keys, I can arrow down to it and then press return. Number of pigs. Whoops. That's it. So let's see. Oh, number of mammals. It is number of pigs. Notice here, if I back up a second, notice how when I start typing, if I press the tab key, it's going to autocomplete up to the next word. And this way it kind of limits the words so that I can start typing. And notice how it limits the options. And then because this first one happens to be one I recently used, it knows that. So I'm just going to go ahead and press tab again. Perfect. OK, now we have a fish. Enter twice. Let number whoops, of fish equals one uh, number of fish as an animal number of fish then the last one is a snake whoops let a uh, number of snakes okay a snake is an animal now notice how if I type and I tab, and then if I type the letter S, then it brings it up and then I press tab again. 
and so there I've auto completed so I did that really quick so for example let me show you how how I did that if I type and I say number and I press tab and then of press tab again and then I type s and then I press tab and I completed it and it is not a mammal cool notice how the numbers are updating here on the right very good good times Okay, now it's important that we want to choose good names. So notice that we've used words like number of dogs, number of cats. Those are good because it describes them. Now you could, you know, shorten it like ND, NC, or N1, N2, but the problem is um, it, it gets a little difficult to remember what these mean. So even though you could write shorter like this, it might be easier to use a more descriptive name so that when you come back to it again, you uh, will be able to remember it. Now, of course, you can even use emoji. So if you love your emoji, you could even do that, but I uh, wouldn't recommend it. It would be a little, a little difficult. Why? Why wouldn't you use it? Well, you can start to tell what they are at a glance. That's the truth. All right, let's go to the next screen. So here we are writing code and we talk about a line of code is known as a statement. So we've already, we've talked about constants and identifier. Now let's take a look at a statement. When you define a constant in Swift, it's called declaring a constant. So the statement above is known as a declaration. I declare that the name of number of dogs has the value of 101. So the word let is a keyword. I've mentioned that before. So a keyword has a special meaning and can't be used as a name. So let is a keyword. This is where you assign the value. We've already talked about that. We'll talk more about these as we go. All right, so we've talked a little bit about how to solve problems, how to name things how things, uh, identifiers, why we use good names, and how to declare a constant.